Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this, the second Sunday of Advent, where we're going to hear from God's Word, specifically through Isaiah, the Old Testament reading, how uh, we are prepared through repentance for the coming of the Lord and seeing Him face to face. So that'll be our focus for worship this morning. Our order of service will be divine service setting three, just like we're typically used to. Um, no changes or adjustments to announce, just a reminder that because we are in the season of Advent, we will skip past the Gloria in Excelsis and go right to the salutation and collect of the day. But other than that, there are no adjustments or changes that need to be announced. So we'll begin with our opening hymn, hymn 347, and we'll stand when we sing the final verse.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll continue with the intro and your bulletin insert, verse by verse, with the Gloria in unison. Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt, it took deep root and filled the land. Glory be to the Father. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort. Comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. 
He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the gradual in our bulletin insert, verse by verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The epistle is from 2 Peter chapter 3. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish, and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. We we'll continue by singing the Alleluia on page 190. Please stand. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. All the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. We'll continue by confessing the Christian faith in the Nicene Creed on page 191. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty.
You may be seated as we continue with our sermon hymn, hymn 344. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Comfort. Comfort ye my people. Speak ye peace. Thus saith our God. You know, I, I kind of wonder does anybody really want to be comforted anymore? Do people even seek after comfort. I mean, in our fast-paced, busy world, does anyone even appreciate a mood of peace, serenity, quiet? And what about especially during this busy time of year? Is anyone even willing to take a moment to hear a voice that gently lulls away all anxiety, speaking wonderful words, saying, Comfort, comfort ye my people. Well then, even if a person is willing to, to try to be comforted and relaxed for just a moment, it always seems like something kind of blows the mood. Especially with technology now, there's always a phone going off in the background, binging or dinging or something to interrupt the comfort that you're tempted to try for. It's like a, a bullhorn on the job site calling you back from lunch. It's the other voice that maybe you heard today. Make way. Make way, coming through, coming through. Come on, move, move, move. Get out of the way. Today, that voice screaming, get out of the way, is John the Baptist. And he's even foretold by Isaiah the prophet, telling us to get up and get with it. 
well, wait a minute, weren't we trying to have peace and tranquility and now John's the bullhorn? Oh, this is like destroying our mood here. Well, the prophet's voice in the Old Testament is supposed to open a new comforting section of the book of Isaiah. Because chapters 1 through 39 were primarily scolding for God's people and judgment, words of judgment, ending with a, a prophecy of the Babylonian captivity where they would be hauled off. Then chapters 40 through 66 are a message of comfort for God's people. It begins well enough. Comfort. Yes, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem. But then the prophet's voice changes altogether. It causes us to wonder, where's the comfort in that voice? It's as if a, a voice cries out that anything standing in God's way will be bulldozed. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, the rough places smooth, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. We hear from God that every valley and mountain will be leveled under God's righteous judgment. It's as if to say, here, here, get that, get that scraper over here. We got some dirt work to do. Get that blasting crew in here. We need some dynamite. Hurry up, hurry up. We need those dozers. That's the voice we're now hearing from Isaiah. The text is a, is a hard hat only area. Vast tracts of land are being completely leveled. It's as if a mine is going through that area. It's not going around the mountains. It's not going around the valleys. No, there's not going to be any mountains or valleys anymore. It's going right through them. See, the, the mind that is coming through is Christ's coming. It is the Messiah's coming. God is on his way. And God doesn't reroute for anybody. Nothing can stand in his way. Not solid granite peaks, not deep, steep ravines, anything is standing in the way, it will get bulldozed. And this is, of course, why 700 years later, John the Baptist came saying, the Lord is coming, prepare. That's to say, repent. Make ready the way of the Lord, repent. John wasn't concerned about the mountains being run over. John wasn't concerned about the valleys. No, he came to see that people didn't get flattened. Now, I know it's hard to say. I know it hurts. But the truth is, lives that aren't level, that are, aren't holy, that may be a little crooked and sinful, lives that aren't perfectly in line with the rule of God's law, they will be blasted away. When the heavy machinery comes rolling through, anyone with sin, standing in that sin, will not be an innocent victim. I mean, we all get excited about Christmas coming, about the Messiah being born, of course, but often the voices of the prophets warn us about the Messiah's coming. 
They warn, give us caution for our excitement. I mean, we hear God's words say, who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire. And that's from Malachi chapter 3, verse 2. So who can stand in the presence of the Lord? Can somebody with, with thoughtless words, who's careless how they act and may have hurt the feelings of others, can that person stand? Someone whose thoughts are selfish, only focused on their own desires, maybe the greedy, maybe those who are lustful and committing all sorts of sexual sins, can they stand? I mean, they kind of act like they think they can. What about somebody who's just standing around completely indifferent, doesn't even care if the Lord is going to come. Totally indifferent and somewhat numb to the king of the universe. Can they stand at his coming? No obstacle, no person will be allowed to stand in his way. Least of all, those in sin. John cries out. Isaiah cries out. Prepare, repent, get ready. You know, out at the, the coal mine, when we were about to blast an area, when I was working out there a couple years ago, when we were about to detonate an area, we'd have numerous people blocking all entrances to that area that we were going to set off. So that way, nobody, it wouldn't even be possible for anybody to be in that area so they wouldn't get hurt by the explosion. We took such great care to protect people and to warn them and make sure nobody went in there. Well, it's the same as what we're hearing today. All good, faithful preachers have to share the call for people to be prepared for Christ in repentance. That's exactly why we observe Advent. It's not just to get us ready for Christmas. Advent is a time focusing on repentance. It's good for us to take some special time to focus on repentance because we confess it's true that when the Lord comes, anyone continually standing in sin will be bulldozed. They will be destroyed. We hear today, comfort. Comfort, my people. But where's the comfort in all that? Where's the message of comfort, Isaiah? Where's the comfort, John? Where's the comfort, Pastor? Hear what else that voice has to say. The voice said, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry? And God says, I'll tell you what to cry. A voice cries out with the truth that we have our own reasons to cry because all flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. I thought we were getting the comfort. Where's the comfort in that? This just keeps getting worse. I mean, what hopelessness, what helplessness, what desperation you're piling on us right now. We're all like grass clippings that get mowed and then thrown out, just composting and rotting away. Flowers, beautiful perhaps for a few days, but then we wilt droop, and then die? Man, that's pretty, 
pessimistic. That's pretty bleak. I haven't heard anything comforting yet. But it's troubling because we know it's accurate, don't we? Hair loss, crow's feet, larger dress sizes. We're always seeing flaws within ourselves. These things are constant reminders. We're fading away. You know about the feeling of withering. Like who knows how many days you come home from work and just want to crash in the sack, just beat. Or even worse, you, you try to accomplish something, because, but because you're so exhausted, it just frustrates you even more. You spend years for saving for retirement, then you lose the loved one you wanted to spend it all with. You think about uh, things you've invested everything in, toward a loving relationship even, trusting relationships with your children, but then there's something broken in that relationship. Something breaks down. You do all the things, do all things right, that you think to save yourself for your, your future, for yourselves, for your spouse, for your family. You prepare for marriage. And then you, what if you wonder if somebody will even come along? What if you're suffering with loneliness? A voice cries out. The grass withers, the flower fades. Where's the comfort in that? Well, the truth is, if that's the way we see ourselves, as flower, as grass, if we stop looking at ourselves for comfort, then there is comfort to be found in the voice of Isaiah and the voice of John and the voice you hear today. Because we are so helpless, it is indeed comforting to hear the voice of our God so clear, so strong, and so irresistible. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Did you hear that voice? Did you hear that? How did it sound? The word of our God stands forever. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. God's voice rings out strong and clear and irresistible. When the herald announces that the Lord is coming, guess what? He comes. When the voice cries that every hill and valley will be leveled, nothing can resist our God. How does that sound? Should sound better. If we want to be big and tough, if we want to be rugged and independent all on our own, we don't need help from anybody. I don't need anything from God. I can get it myself. If we're tempted to stand up to God or even to stand before Him in sin, most of all, if we're going to set ourselves up as mountains in God's way, then the last thing we want is a voice of God that's irresistible, powerful, mighty, and that moves mountains. No, if that's the way we think, then we want a God with a, a wimpy voice, a soft, pleading voice that we can ignore. We can disregard. We want a God with a voice that speaks wishes, possibilities, but not truths. A God whose threats and promises will never actually happen, but are just idle threats. If that's the kind of voice we want to hear from God, then there's no comfort in the voice of Isaiah. 
There's no comfort to be found in John's voice because they share that the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of our God does, in fact, stand forever. So if we realize that we are grass, if we are a flower that fades, then that's the very voice we want to hear. A voice that's strong, clear, irresistible. A voice whose promises will, in fact, be accomplished. A voice that can give us strength and the certainty that we lack in this uncertain world. Hear the voice of your Lord, O Zion. You who, would, who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem. You who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand. And his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom. And gently lead those who are with young. Comfort. Yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Here's true comfort. Not just a wish, not just a nice idea. Something that is true and ha is going to happen. As a matter of fact, it has happened. The Lord God has come, just as Isaiah knew, just as John proclaimed. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of our God stands. Jesus has come. He lived and died on the cross. He rose from the grave. Our iniquity has been pardoned, completely forgiven. Jesus came, suffered, and died in our place to rescue us from our helpless situation. That was John's message, too, for those who wanted to listen to the rest of it. So, same for you. The Messiah is gathering up his helpless lambs, holding us close to his heart, we might just as well say Jesus is carefully picking up the faded flowers and pressing them gently to a page to preserve and seal those petals forever. You see, we may be aging, we may be fading, but in Christ we have eternal youth. Our only real true source for any hope, no matter what happens in this world, is in Jesus, his promises, and all his good gifts that he gives to us. We may feel withered, crashed at the end of the day, but Christ always refreshes us and renews us for another. We may think our dreams, our plans, our families are coming to nothing. But Christ always has a plan to draw us closer to himself, which is so much better and greater than our wildest dreams. When the voice of the Lord speaks these promises, nothing can resist him. No obstacle will prevent his doing all this for us. There's confidence in that strong, clear voice, isn't there? There's comfort for withered, faded souls. A voice says, make way. A voice says, you're grass. But a truly good, 
true and reliable voice of good tidings, whose words will stand forever, are shared for you. A voice of comfort. Comfort, yes, comfort for my people. Thus says the Lord for you today. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, I'd ask you to please stand as we sing together the offertory on page 192. Continue with our offering him as we bring the offering forward. Continue with the service of the sacrament on page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. It is truly meet right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven,
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink a bit, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my high blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
table of the Lord. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sins. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and teach you in this love. Take, eat, the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus unto the Lord for he is good. It's not typical or proper order, but we will continue with the prayers of the church that got bypassed a moment earlier, and we will conclude with the, the Lord's Supper collect. So uh, we'll insert the prayers of the church right before that and conclude with this. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. 
Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. As you led Joseph like a flock, so now by your Son lead us into straight paths. Bring us out of the bondage of our sin and plant us securely in your eternal promises. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, in your blessed patience, you send your prophets and apostles, pastors and teachers in all times that sinners would not perish, but rather reach repentance and find comfort in your word, which alone will stand forever. Preserve the servants of your church, give to our congregation and all congregations an increase of hope that we may await the revealing of the new heavens and the new earth in lives of holiness and godliness, diligent to be found without spot or blemish and at peace. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, preserve your gift of marriage against the ravages of sin, the schemes of the devil and the raging of the world. Bless the couples and families of our congregation. Strengthen them in love and care for one another and establish them on the foundation of your word. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, your word alone endures forever. The nations of the world come and go before you. Even kings and rulers are like grass before your breath. Preserve us from placing our trust in princes and mortal men. Give us leaders who will rule after your good pleasure, keeping order and protecting life, that we may live in godly quietness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, graciously regard all for whom those we pray today, especially for Marlene and Pam and all our brothers and sisters at St. Paul requesting prayer. Lord, in your mercy. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into our flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in the sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn.
Thank you for coming this morning. Um, first of all, sorry about that mistake in the service today. I hope you forgive me for that. Um, but I think we rebounded from it rather appropriately. So um, sorry about that. Try not to do things like that. But um, it happens sometimes. A um, couple brief announcements. Um, just first a reminder, we will be caroling this afternoon at 4 p.m. Meet here at 4, right? Yeah, meet here at four. Um, so that's the plan. And then we will continue with our Advent midweek services um, at 5.30. And other than that, I don't think I have a whole lot of additional announcements right now this week. Uh, thank you again for coming and feel free to greet one another in Christ. Mm -hmm.